extensively in grade 11. And today our main focus would be on creditors recon. Remember this topic covers three sections, namely your bank reconciliation, debtors reconciliation, and creditors reconciliation. Before we move on to the actual work, let's quickly recap what we need to know. Firstly, what do we mean by the term reconciliation? The first point is that we know it's an internal control measure. Internal control means that simply means that it is something that we need to do it's to check whether things are being managed effectively and controlled in a manner in which we want it to be done. Secondly, in order to achieve this, we need to do some comparisons. We need to look at different sets of information or records. In some cases, it's the records of the firm or the business. And in other cases, we also need to look at information we receive from other service providers, such as the bank, or in relation to creditors reconciliation, we would be looking at the statements that we receive from the suppliers. Once we have compared the information, we note the differences. There could be errors, there could be omissions, and then we need to take the relevant steps to address them. This is what we will discuss as we move into our discussions. Before moving on, just want to point out that this topic will fall under managing resources and internal controls and will form part of paper two in the final examination. Coming now to our main focus of attention, and that is creditors reconciliation. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is identify the, the key role players. It's the business, we have the business, we are the business, and we will be buying goods or interacting with, with another party. We will refer to them as our, our supplier. And if we buy goods on credit from them, then they would be our creditor. So basically, we have this interrelationship between these two parties. There's buying and there's selling taking place. Okay, now the business would be buying the goods on credit mainly, and therefore, they have this relationship with the supplier who has granted them credit. Now, in granting them credit, obviously they have done some form of credit check and we have also negotiated some type of credit terms with them. And then they are the party that is doing the selling. Now, coming to the, this type of activity, there's a lot of related activities to buying and selling. Before looking at the different activities that we need to engage in. Let's be clear with what of how we keep the records. From the business point of view, uh, because we have a we have now have a creditor, yeah, the main journals there would be our creditors journal, that's where we record goods that we buy on credit. The creditors allowances journal, this would be the journal where we record any goods that we might return or any allowances we that we might receive for goods that were damaged or not according to our order or whatever other reason that an allowance might be granted for. The CPJ is when we make payments to the creditor. And as you know, at this stage, we can make payments by either uh, issuing checks to them or in the modern trend, we can even uh, now just uh, engage in electronic banking doing an EFT. And then the, the last journal, the general journal, and you are quite familiar with the general journal at this stage, it's a journal where we record transactions, which cannot be recorded in any of the other specialized journals. Sometimes there are things like uh, interest charged by the, by the creditor, um, and we will come across other examples as we go through this section. Now, just because we are buying goods on credit, we have to extend our accounting records beyond what we do, we've done in grade 10, where we learned only the cash transactions. Now we would have creditors' ledger accounts. Each creditor or, or supplier that we buy goods from on credit, we will open up a creditors' ledger account uh, on that person's name, and we'll assign that a creditors' ledger number. 
Now, for our purposes in school, we just use uh, the folio reference of CL1 for creditor 1, CL2, CL3. In the real world, they will normally issue an account number. So when your parents do receive accounts from places where they buy on credit, they would have an account number. That account number is their account in the books of that business. The creditor, on the other hand, is also keeping records of the transactions or, or their engagement with the, with the business, we, we being the business. But from their point of view, they are selling the goods to us, so we are a debtor to them. Now, being a debtor to them, they would operate a debtor's ledger account, and in their debtor's ledger, they would have an account in the name of our business. So what will happen at the end of every month, they will send us a statement of account and the statement of account would simply be a reflection of our account in their debtor's ledger. So basically they're just giving us a copy of how our account looks in their debtor's ledger. Right, now just to summarize the activities from all what I've already said, in the books of the business, we have, we have a liability now. A creditor's ledger account, the creditor, we owe them money looking at the definition. If you owe someone money, that's a liability. So our creditor is a liability to the business. And because it's a, we are paying them on a monthly basis or depending on the terms that they grant us, it is a short-term liability or a current liability, right? So looking at our counting equation, we know from grade 10 that a liability would increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. So that's from the point of view of the business. Let's look at, let's check the, the flow of the transactions. The first, in the first instance, we will be buying goods. We buy goods from them on credit. So we record that in the creditors journal, the CJ and the source document there would be an invoice. Right. In most cases, it would be the original invoice that we received from them. We might even uh, use the number on that invoice. And in some cases, we do tend to renumber. Some firms do tend to renumber. Okay, so that's the buying action. Uh, the next thing is we might return goods to them. And when we return goods, it normally the goods that we bought. So that's why there, there is a link between these two. And if we are going to return any goods, we will complete a debit note. A debit note because we want to decrease the account in our books. So our document is focusing on our business. You will see why I'm, I'm emphasizing this point when we now later look at the same principle from the point of view of the creditor. So just remember this now, the debit note is according to our books because we want to decrease the amount that we owe them. Remember, we would be making this entry in the creditors' allowances journal. The third action that I've got listed here is when we when we actually need to start paying paying them. Normally, what happens is we wait for the statement to see what our balance is. We do the comparison and we issue the checks. Sometimes the supplier. Also, we, we negotiate terms with the supplier whereby if we pay within a certain date, we will be um, we, we will receive discounts. So we a, a firm would normally take advantage of that as well. So remember, the payment would be recorded in the CPJ. Your document there is a check counter file or an EFT, electronic funds transfer, if you use the internet to make a direct payment to your supplier. And the last journal that is relevant to the section here is your general journal. The document there is a journal voucher and I gave you one example of where they might charge us interest on an account that might be overdue and we might have to make that entry in the general journal. So this is from the point of view of the business, the flow of transactions being a liability. You've got your journals. These are the relevant journals and become familiar with the documents involved for each of those journals. Now switch your roles a little bit just to focus from the other point, person's point of view. Think of the supplier now. The supplier is a current asset to them and we will have 
they will have an account for us in the hitters ledger take um, at this stage you should realize that they would they would probably have a number of customers and we are just one data of the many debtors that they might have so the rules of the debtors will apply uh, in their books uh, being an asset uh, when they sell goods to us they will debit our account and our balance amount owing to them it will increase and when they credit our account the amount that we owe them will decrease and this is according to their books their records so clearly you can see uh, just from looking at the first part of the slide on the top that they are doing the opposite of what we do so there, there it goes here and when we credit their, their account in our books the balance will go up but in their books they will be making a debit entry to increase our balance there now their entries are recorded just as we have done in the section under debtors sometimes you need to just reflect on how, because you've completed the data section before you've done this but let's look at what they, they will be doing when they sell remember we buying they are selling when they sell to us they would record that in their debtors journal and they would issue the invoice remember we are using the same invoice that they send us as our source document it's the the original will be sent to us and they will have a duplicate copy and from that they will make the entry in the debtors journal when we return goods to them they would record that in the debtors allowances journal and because when the goods come back to them they would have to decrease our account so therefore they are they are going to prepare a credit note can you see that uh, why i mentioned debit note earlier on because the debit note is according to our books but the credit note is something that they prepare so remember this is an important point because when we return goods the credit note from the supplier is not our source document the debit note that we have prepared and sent with the goods that's our source document the credit note would come back to us and uh, we could use the term there as by stating that it is a supporting document it supports the transaction that took place when we return the goods so we have a DAJ and when we send money to them by either issuing a check or the EFT they are going to receive that money so a payment from us is a receipt to them and when they receive that money they will record that in their CRJ and they will issue a receipt for that amount which they receive and again there might be general entries that they have to prepare to take into account any other transaction that might take place between the, the two firms between us and them so just uh, uh, remember this and keep this in the back of your mind where we are keeping identical set sets of information but we are doing the opposite because to us they, uh, they are a liability and to them we are an asset a current liability and a current asset so taking that into account let's look at how it would appear in our respective books so we look at the left hand side here and we say okay we are the business in our business we will have a creditors ledger creditors ledger of xy traders so clearly by looking at this name on the top here xy traders it tells us that the name of the business is xy traders we are the business xy traders in our creditors ledger we have one account called kelly suppliers it is cl5 so we have many creditors this is cl5 kelly's suppliers we do buy goods from them on credit this minus and plus we just put them on the top here for our convenience because we know at this stage that when we make credit entries to this account it's going to increase its balance and a debit entry is going to decrease this balance what's missing on this table here is a folio column because it's in the creditors le uh, ledger it's always nice to have a folio column here so that we, we can record the journal from which this transaction was extracted and entered into this account so it's something that we can practice when we look at here, this account here switching over to the creditor the business we see they have a debtors ledger so debtors ledger of Kelly suppliers this is in their books we don't have access to their books they have their own accountants and they have their own way in which they decide to run that uh, their credit department we put the word statement here because to us the business 
this would be a, a copy of what would appear on our statement when we receive it from them. We know in their books, in their debtors ledger, they have an account called XY Traders, and XY Traders is a debtor to them. So we, this is our books, we are a debtor to them. This is their books, debtors ledger, and we are credited to them. So therefore, our, our the information should be a mirror image. Like I said earlier, they do the opposite of what we do. doing. Right, so let's just compare the information now. On the first or on the beginning of the year, we month, this is on a monthly basis now, we have a balance. We were owing them according to our books 23,000 and according to their books, we were owing them 23. No problem so far. And when we buy goods, uh, they will issue us an invoice. We will record the invoice number here. If we had the column here, we'd put the journal. They would say debtor's journal, and we would say creditor's journal, CJ. And on the credit side, the amount is 12,000. On the debit side, 12,000. The balance goes up to 35,000 in our books, 35 in theirs. So there's no issues there as well. Then the next entry here, remember this is an example to show the different types of entries. So we've got recorded here a debit note number. The journal would be a creditor's allowances journal. There was a 2,000 Rand return or allowance that brings the account down. So if you look at the last column, can you see we keep a, a record after every transaction of how the, the balance changes. It was 35, we return goods for 2,000 and therefore we now owe them 33,000. The same transaction to them would be recorded on the credit side and the balance would be 33,000. When we issue a check, we debit their account, the balance goes down, 27. They receive the check, they issue a receipt, they make a credit entry and the balance goes down, 27,000. Now you might be wondering at this stage, what's the problem with this credit control? They all, it looks so identical. Okay, when we make a payment, I told you we might negotiate some kind of uh, uh, incentives for making early payments and they might say, no problem, you will be entitled to a 10% discount if you make your payment on time. So we know that they grant us discounts and we record the 600 rands here. 600 rands would be 10% 10, 10 of the amount that we paid. To us, it is a discount received and it's an income to the business right it's an income because we made a payment we don't, we're going to pay them less it brings our account down now we only owe them 26,400 to them this discount when they do grant us a discount is called discount allowed because from their point of view it's an expense they won't be getting the 600 then from us and the, our account balance we owe them 26,400 if there's another transaction where we bought goods the invoice number will be reflected uh, reflected we will make a credit entry and the account would go up. They would make the same type of entry on the opposite column, debit 8,000 and the account would go up, 34,400. So from the data, from the supplier's point of view, they saw at the end of the month that we, we were not paying our account on time. We only made one payment. We've been owing 23,000 and therefore they charged us interest. If they charge us interest, to them, it will be income. It's extra money that they must receive. Interest, income, so they debit our account. Our account balance goes up 34,500. And, and this would be the, that the last amount in this account would be the balance that is due to them. And they would reflect this amount as an asset, a current asset to their business. We would have to record this. Uh, this interest as an expense to the business because we've been defaulting, not paying our account regularly and not paying the, the, the correct amounts. So therefore, we have to uh, credit the creditor's account. We will be debiting interest expense and we credit the creditor. So on the credit side of the account, we write 100 shares and the balance goes up 34,000. what's um, appearing on the statement, then that means the amount, according to us, 34,500 is what we owe them, and the statement is, is reflecting the exact same amount, uh, then we have no problem, we have no reconciliation to do. Reconciliation means there is a difference, 
we need to find the differences what's causing those what's cause what is the cause of those differences why uh, why is our books saying that we owe them a certain amount but then when we receive the statement it shows a different amount when there's a difference then there is a need to do a reconciliation reconciliation means finding the differences highlighting them and dealing with them and, and taking appropriate action so that we can understand why we have a difference when it comes to those balances now just to summarize what we've just said when there's differences we, we when the statement when we receive the statement from the supplier we open it we, we, we first compare the entries we look at the account in our books and we look at the, the information of the statement we compare we must bear in mind that like i just pointed out several times to you the amounts will be on the on the opposite sides we will be looking at our debit column against their credit column to see if all the amounts are there we will be looking at our credit column against their debit column to see if all the amounts are there if they are not there we are going to make a note and we are going to to address them right that's that's where we come in we highlight all those differences now there's a two scenarios the two main scenarios if the errors and omissions are in the creditors ledger creditors ledger being the books of the business remember that if the business uh, we are in control of our books we we can correct things when we find mistakes so if the error or the omissions are in our books we must handle the debt we would make general general entries then we will update or we'll correct the creditors ledger account and then we are fine we are satisfied that we have taken care of the errors that we found in our records so so that's fine but what what happens if the error omissions are on the statement if they are on the statement this is the problem of the supplier because remember the supplier is giving us a copy of our account as it appears in their books now we we don't have access to their books we just have the statement that we received so when we receive the statement we see those errors there we can't we, we can't do anything about rectifying the books so what do we do we make a note we make a note of these differences and we, we we prepare what is called a reconciliation statement and we know where they're supposed to be on the statement so that we can see whether those are the entries that are causing the differences between our records and their records remember when it is also uh, part of our, our duties uh, not just to make a note of them and, and, and wait for the next statement to compare to see whether they have been rectified it is one of our responsibilities to, to engage with the supplier to say uh, excuse me we received your statement what's going on we see that you made uh, you have left out this thing or you omitted that or you made a mistake we point out these things to them because sometimes they might not realize uh, until maybe it's too late that they made a mistake and and hopefully they are also doing a reconciliation from their side so they can also see uh, but they would not have a statement because we don't send a statement to them right we are not sending the statement to them we are receiving a statement from them so that's why it is quite important for us to inform them of the changes and then we make a note of those things that we send to them and we check on the next statement to see if they have actually taken them into account now that what we just done is look at all the background information on understanding the logic and the the need to do the reconciliation that's all fine and good i'm sure you are in uh, it, it actually helped you to understand why we need to do it but more important for you is what do we do for the activities that we get in class and what do we need to know to do them correctly so let's look at some of the examples of the differences that you might come across this at this point i'm expecting you to take note of them and listen carefully so that when we get the activities the, the activities will reflect on the things that i'm going to show you here but you won't be able to see this slide here you, you would have hopefully you make a note so you understand what we're saying the first important difference would be a case of overcast or undercast amount so when we are comparing our books with the statement we notice that for a certain invoice or a certain document that we have one amount and they have a different amount 
Now, when we, when we use the term overcast and undercast, we are simply saying that the amount is over what it should be, that means more than, or it's under what it should be, that, that means it is less than. So, to give you an example, we bought goods from the supplier for 5,000 rands. So, in our books, that 5,000 should be on the credit column. We recorded it on the credit column, it increased the balance or the amount that we owe them. When we looked at their books, it was not showing as 5,000. It's on the debit side, correct side, where it should be. The invoice number is recorded correctly, but the amount in their books is showing 4,000. So, there's 4,000 written in their books and there's 5,000. Okay, so clearly someone made a mistake. Just by, just by identifying the, the difference, it's not, it's not solving our problem because we don't know how to correct it, we don't know who made the mistake. So when you're doing these activities, the first thing you need to establish, although you have found the difference, the, the most important thing is who made that difference or, or the, the mistake, who made the mistake. If the mistake is in our books, Remember, there will be a, some points at the bottom of the activity which, which will say the following differences were discovered and it will be A, B, C, D, E, whatever it is. So they will tell us there that the, the amount in, on the statement is correct. If they say the amount on the statement is correct, that means 4,000 is correct, but 5,000 in our books is incorrect. So our books is overstated, overcast, it's more than what it should be. So we made the mistake. That's how you're going to analyze these uh, differences that you find. Sometimes they might say the statement is correct. Other times they might use it, say it in a different way. They'll say the amount on the statement is incorrect. That means our book is correct and theirs is incorrect. So 4,000 is incorrect, it's supposed to be 5,000. That means they have understated the amount. Remember, we, we, we also have to keep ethics in mind. So if their amount is 4,000 and it's less than ours, don't think you should keep quiet about that. You still need to do the reconciliation and find out the differences. Right, the next uh, example of a difference. The amount is posted on the wrong side of the account. Remember, in our books, the credit column is a plus, the debit is a minus. So if we return goods, to the supplier. We should reflect that amount on the debit side because the amount that we owe them must decrease by the value or the, the amount of that returns. So it should be on the debit side. Okay. Sometimes we might make a mistake because we have debtors and we have creditors and we are busy doing all the month end posting. We posted the return to the credit side. So that would be an example of an amount post to the wrong side of an account. So sometimes it, in an exam, it's not very clear. They don't just give you so many clues like that. They, sometimes they won't even tell you it's posted to the wrong side. You need to look at the account that they gave you and you see it. And then you know it's on the wrong side. It can happen on the statement as well. An amount could be on the wrong side of the statement. So you could look out for the posting on the wrong side. That can either be in our books or on the statement. Remember all the differences that I'm pointing out. It's not related to just one business. It can be either on in the books of our business or on the statement. Another example of differences, an amount such as a discount is omitted or not granted. Now, while I was talking about the discount earlier, I said that we have negotiated with the supplier that if we pay early, we get a 10% discount. Sometimes what happens in the firm, we decide to write in the discount. We just take it we, we make the entry for the 10% discount. When we receive the statement, we see that the discount is not paid. The, the, the supplier has not granted the discount. Um, I'm not granted. We, these terms will, will tell us that it's not on the statement. Sometimes the discount might appear on the statement and we forgot to take it into account. So I'm just pointing out the differences that you find but you need to read the small print below the activity to see exactly who made the mistake, like I told you at the start here. Although you're finding the difference, you need to find out who made the mistake so that we can rectify it in the correct places. Right. The next 
A difference that I have noted down for you is an invoice or a payment or a return that is omitted. So the, the, these are the different types of transactions that would take place. You've got your invoice for the CJ, the CPJ or the CAJ, it's just omitted. Goods were purchased, if someone, either we don't have it in our books or they, they, it does not, it's not reflected on the statement. Simply omitted by one person, not, not wrong, uh, it's not undercast or overcast or wrong side, it's just not there. Okay, we need to establish if it is a legitimate transaction, that means it is a transaction, we did buy goods from them, we do have an invoice, we just forgot to put it in, we forgot to write it in. The next common example, transaction in the creditor's ledger after the statement date. This is a common one, we sometimes refer to this as being a time difference. Uh, what normally happens is that the statement will come not on the last day, it doesn't reflect the, the transactions to the last day of the month. They send a statement in the last week of the month, the last entry there might be on the 27th or the 28th. If you have recorded any transactions after the date of the statement, it's obvious that that amount would not be on the statement. There's nothing wrong with the transaction. You probably made a payment on the 29th, it's just not reflected on the statement. The creditor might have received it, but they did not receive it for that time. Okay, the creditor has received this, the, the payment, but it's not on that statement. So that's, you just be aware of those things, the, the statement date, when does it, when's the last day on the statement, and everything that appears in our books, in our books after the statement would not appear on that statement, you need to take that into account. Errors in posting, transaction of another business or another creditor. So this is a common type of error that we make sometimes, or the supplier can also make the same mistake. They probably sold goods to someone else, but it's appearing on our statement, and it's not something that we have bought. Or we also posting, like I just mentioned, we posting to so many different suppliers. We have posted some, uh, goods that we bought from a different supplier into this supplier's, into this creditor's account, and showing as if now that we owe them much more than actually what we do. So, or it could be a payment or a return. Doesn't matter what type of transaction. We're just simply saying that there is a transaction in one of our books that don't belong to either of us. And the last bullet that I've got here is ethical issues. The manager is ordering goods for himself using the company documents or the owner ordering goods through the company. So these type of scenarios are, are, are there in the exam paper where um, just to create another element for you to deal with because you know in most cases when you do get a transaction like this, if they don't just ask you to fix it in the reconciliation, uh, there will be questions on it, on what can the manager can, what must the manager do, what went wrong and what suggestions for to solve that problem. So just to uh, give you a little further explanation on this one here, sometimes what happens is you would see an entry, goods purchased, you'd see it on the statement, it's not in the books of the business. And when we investigate that, the supplier will say, no, I've got an order from your company. Your manager has ordered these goods, you are liable for the payment, I, I supply the goods. So in that case, we have to take that into account as being a business transaction. We have to record it as something that we owe the supplier. But obviously now we, we have an internal control problem where we have to deal with the manager who is ordering goods for himself. Okay, so just these are just some of the common examples that we come across in different activities. There might be more uh, because as examiners set exam papers, they know that we as teachers and learners, we tend to look at all the past papers and look at different trends and look at different scenarios So and we become good at, at those things. So examiners will, will try and look for something different just to complicate matters for us. And the one that I came across uh, not too long ago is where we had uh, a, a, a supplier or a creditor to the firm who was also a debtor to our firm. The business is buying goods from this person and is also selling goods to the person. And you could have a transaction here where we say 
we need to transfer his debit balance from his debtor's ledger to his creditor's ledger. So be aware of something like that as well. <coughs> How do we start this process? Now we, we need to get down to the accounting application of what we know so far. How do we start? The first starting point, the balance in the creditor's ledger account. We look at it, we're comparing. Now remember we are comparing. The balance in the creditor's ledger account is different from the balance on the statement. That's the starting point. Remember I told you earlier on, if the balance is the same, there's no reconciliation. You'll be smiling. There's no need to do anything. But in most cases, the balance in the creditor's ledger account is different from the statement. So what do we need to do? We need to investigate. We go through them carefully. We, we compare the debit column with the credit column. We look at where is the error or the omission. We identify them. And then the next important point, who made the mistake? You remember, I did mention that you find the mistake, but you need to know which one is correct, which one is incorrect. So you take appropriate action. The next point, if it's in the creditor's ledger of the business, we make the GJ entry and update the creditor's ledger account. This is just a summary of what I told you earlier on. If the error is on the statement, we inform the creditor to, to clarify it for us or to rectify it if it's necessary. And we will also be preparing a reconciliation statement. Now, I want to show you an example of where it's not the same. There's our books. This is the books of the business, the creditor's ledger account of Kelly suppliers in the books of XY traders. And this is the statement that we receive from them. In our books, according to us, we owe them 21,000. This is what we were recording as we engage with them. When we receive the statement, the statement says, no, you owe us 22,700 yen. So straight away, we, we are not seeing eye to eye. We have a difference. Uh, our books are not the same as these. So what did I say in this previous slide? The starting point, creditor's ledger account is different from the statement. So that's what we mean by that. It's different. Now we need to go and scrutinize. When it's not different, then we say, oh, now we've got work to do. If it was the same, no work. If now it's different, we need to go and find out what caused those differences. So we look and see. There's a 12,000 day, but there's 1,200 day. Someone made a mistake. It's either us or them. That's the first difference that I noticed. Then I see I've got 600 grand here. It's a debit note. Debit note means I return goods to them. And But I'm increasing my amount, what I owe them, by 600. Actually, when I return, it's also decreased. So there's an example of the wrong side. But when I check it in their books, now they are fine. They have made it on the credit side, so this area is in my book here. That's why I don't bring the 600. Then I noticed that I made, I gave them a check for 6,000 and I took the discount of 610. When I checked their books, they have not given me a discount, it's not there. So that is another difference that I found. Then there's an invoice on the statement of 8,000 rands. I don't have the invoice, so I have to investigate that one. If I did buy the goods from them, that means I missed it. It's an omission in my books. The other possibility is that these people must have sold these goods to someone else, but they recorded it in the books of my account in their, in their books, into my uh, data ledger account. So I, it's appearing on the statement. I don't have it. Then there is a check here for 5,000 rand, which I paid them, and they have not taken that into account. What's going on? Okay, so um, I should be owing them less than what they say. And then I notice mistake. So my investigation will tell me what I need to do, whether I made the mistake or whether they have made the mistakes. So that's the next point. So you look at the next point, I have listed them for you. First of all, the invoice 123 was incorrectly recorded on the statement. So I'm told that it's incorrect on the statement. Right. So that means when I go back and I have a look at it, I see this year is 1,200, it's 12,000. So that, that means these people here have missed a zero. So they have under 
stated or undercast the amount so when when there's an undercast or overcast i need to find the difference and i can see that to bring this up to twelve thousand, i need another ten thousand eight hundred so the the statement is less by ten thousand eight hundred so i go in here and on my recon and, and i am going to show you the 10,800. I'm going to say for number one, this is how you would do it in an exam. You would start, it would start, they would give you a table and say, This is my creditor's ledger. I I have 21,000 rand according to me. I owe them 21,000. And when I receive the statement, uh, the statement is saying that I owe them 22,700 rand. And then the things that I note here will be part of the reconciliation. Okay, so for number one, the statement is incorrect. I have to add another 10,800 here. Okay, right, so that was number one. Number two, the returns was incorrectly recorded by someone. Can you see what they what they have done here? They're not saying who. The, the return is incorrectly recorded by someone. But I know that when I return, I was supposed to decrease my balance this one so that someone is me. According to them, they have decreased it, so they are fine. So I am the someone. So when I go to my records here for number two, I have to look at that incorrect posting. Let's talk a little bit about that one. If I debit this account here now by 600, I reverse it. I'm just simply going to cancel the 600. I'm going to decrease my account by, it's already increased by 600. If I make a debit entry, I'm going to decrease it by 600, which means I would have not taken that return into account. So if something is posted to the wrong side of an account, I have to decrease it by that amount. And then to take it into account, I must make another debit entry of 600. So therefore I have to do the 600 twice. I have to double, double that one up. So looking at what I've done there, I am going to double that up. Okay, now I hope you, you understand why I'm doubling this up. Because when I look at my my ledger account, if I debit with 600, the debit just cancels the credit error that I made. It does not take into account the return that was done. So remember that as an important point. When something is posted on the wrong side, you have to do it twice. The first time you do it is to correct the error, and the second time you're doing that amount is to take it into account. I've actually seen some learners would actually make two entries here. Let's say minus 600, minus 600. Minus 600, the first one is to correct the error because there was a plus 600, and then the second minus 600 is taking the returns into account. Okay, so that's a nice uh, tip for you. When something is posted to the wrong side, you have to say times two. There are some children that they just simply look at it and say, okay, that's my times two transaction. The third one, the supplier stated that the check was late, so no discount was allowed. So they told me that, yeah, I'm jumping the gun a bit, this 600 rand that I have taken as a discount, he said, no, no, your check was late, so you're not entitled to the discount, so we are correct. So if they say we are correct and we have taken the discount, what do, what do we do when we take a discount? We decrease the account. So now we're going to say, okay, um, we're going to accept that we did not pay on time. We have to put the 600 rand back. Now, putting it back means you've got to add back the 600. So therefore, for number three, I'm adding back the 600. Okay, because why? I've taken it as a, uh, as, a, as a deduction to the amount that I owe them. Remember, the, you will get an example where the supplier might say, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I was supposed to give you the discount. I will take that into account in the next month's uh, statement. In that case, when you read it like that, then you won't have a plus 600 here. That means our books are correct. You'll have the minus 600 under the statement uh, column. Yeah, that means they have made a mistake. Okay, so just read carefully to see who made the mistake. That's the important thing. Looking at the next bullet, the 8,000 there. The 8,000 there on the statement was for goods sold to some other business. So now we are told 
that this 8,000 rand, the supplier has made a mistake. It was not supposed to be in our statement. He says, okay, sorry, I, I made a mistake. I sold this to someone else. We don't need to know that name of that person. We just know it's not us. So that means they have made a mistake. We have to make a note of that on the recall and they must take it out. If they made a mistake, they need to take it out. And that will be a minus 8,000. Can you see using pluses and minuses, it makes it much more easier for you. So this is what you need to get used to. Is the amount too much or too little? And you just use pluses and minuses. You don't need to go to debits and credits. Some learners even prefer to use brackets here. If you use a bracket, it's fine. It, it will denote a negative amount. And then if they don't even say plus, uh, they just write an amount that will denote that it is a positive amount. The next transaction is telling us that the check for 5,000 rand was issued after the statement date. So here's an example of a check, this check. It, the statement came to us and then we issued this check. So this check was not going to make the statement here because it was too late for the statement. After the statement date, it's missing on the statement. So the way we record that is by just simply showing that it's supposed to be deducted from the statement. Right, so that 5,000 rand will go in there, minus 5,000 rand. And the last one, interest is charged by a supplier uh, when payment is late. They're telling us that interest is charged by the supplier when payment is late. So therefore, this 100 rand there is correct on the statement, no problem with that one. Okay. And they have the right to charge us interest. It's something that we know about. It's part of the credit terms that we, we negotiated with them. So we're going to say, okay, we'll have to include it. And when we include it here, we're going to owe them 100 and more. We need to put it in the credit. It will have to be a plus. So when I'm entering for number six, I'm going to say plus 100 rands. Right. So then I have taken into account that this is how I would take into account um, all the differences that I found when I was doing the comparison. Remember, you need to be very clear. They will give you a table like this with the numbers. They, they might use Roman numerals here, or they might say A, B, C, D, E. Depending on how they number it, it doesn't matter. But please do not fill amounts in every column. Sometimes when a learner is not sure, then they put amounts in all the columns. Remember, this two, 1,200, if you put it in the wrong side, it's wrong. You know, although you might get the amount right, you will, it would be wrong, it's in the wrong column. If you put amounts on both sides, they, they also apply another thing which is called negative marking. So they might give you two marks here for getting it right, and then they say minus one for putting an amount that don't belong into this one here. Right, and then at the end, when you total the, 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 the last, the total now, the creditors ledger, and you total this side here, taking into account the pluses and minuses, starting from the opening, the, the balance that you brought down, the incorrect balance, and you're making all these corrections. These are the corrections you are making. We should end up having the creditors ledger equal to the statement, okay. And voila, we see that it is, so we, so we, we know it's going to be, we have done most of it correctly, or we done it correctly. Remember, it doesn't always mean that if you, if it is right, you, that you, if you got the same total on both sides, that you will be 100% correct. Sometimes you could make some, what we call a compensating error. You make an error on the debit side and a similar error on the credit side, and you end up having the same. A creditor's ledger account for the statement. Here, I just wanted to show you an example of how it would look in an exam paper. Um, you'll get your question number, obviously, name of business. It's, it's always advisable to go into an exam room with your highlighter. You can highlight the, the important information that would speed up your process in answering the question and you know exactly what's going on. Okay, let's start by looking at the information that is presented to us. A statement of account, we have Marzi Traders, first of all. You look at the names, Marzi Traders, that would probably be our business. And then 
and I look at the account in the creditors ledger I have an account there for more suppliers here's another indicator that I can uh, tell you about when you see the word trader you know that we are business and they, in the exam papers they always tend to help us by making the name give, give the name gives us a clue as to which one is a business and which one is the supplier so when you see trader mass trader stores whatever and you know they are talking about us the business and then we have mall supplier wholesaler that would be the creditor so we know who's playing this game here it's the trader we are the trader and mall supplier that would be our creditor Reading through the small print, a statement of account was received from Creditor Mall on the 25th of September. I'm going to highlight 25th because I know that that's going to be a significant date for me because the statement will end on that date. And when I look at my books, I can see there well, I'm going up to the 30th. And obviously, this transaction is not going to be on that statement. Can you see just by knowing how the examiners are thinking, even before reading the question, I can start preparing myself for certain things because this would not appear on the statement I will have to put it in the recon. The outstanding balances does not correspond with the amount reflected in the credit ledger account. So they're telling me there's a difference and I need to rectify it. So I basically have to prepare the correct uh, credit ledger account and do a recon which is those two columns. Can you see it's adding up to 15 marks. So when I look at this year I can see that According to me, my books, that's the balance. And according to the statement, it's going to be 41,000. Uh, sorry, 40,271. So there's my difference. So when you get this activity, you can do exactly what I'm doing. You make, make notes of the people, the time period, the date, and look at what's required by the question. And then you know that the closing balance on the purchase ledger account and the closing amount on the statement that's my starting point when I start this activity I want to start there and then I want to start listing the differences now as I go through it I can see that there's, there's one difference there the invoice 346 and there's invoice 346 it's the same invoice but the amount is different I see I've got 11808 and I've got 10,200 96. So that's one difference that I need to deal with. The credit note, my debit note is 816. And then it's on the debit side. So that one is fine, I think, because I was supposed when I return goods, I must debit and it's going to decrease the balance. So I don't have a problem there. I see the credit note to them, that same credit note, but it's on the debit side. So it's an amount posted on the wrong side. They supposed to decrease my account they have increased my account when I look at the balance in the end I see it's increased by that amount so that's something that I have to deal with as well then I issued a check and I've got a discount I see they have got a receipt for the same amount no problem with that one 22.788 but I've got a discount here which does not appear on that statement I need to find out what's going on did I give the discount or did I, did I get it or did they um, decide to cancel it or what's the story there? I need to know. Then I've got an invoice here for 135. I see they, there's no invoices here in that range of 135. So this invoice, it's a range look out. It doesn't look in sequence with what I'm getting from this supplier. So I think I need to deal with that one as well. And then the 378 is in my books and in their books so I know that's fine the amount is 7188 7188 okay I don't have a problem with that one so that one is correctly recorded I look at the next invoice on the 24th 396 and 396 it's the same invoice but I've got an amount of 8829 and they are reflecting it at 9810 so I'm going to have an issue with that one or someone made a mistake and then I noticed that they've also charged me interest of 29 which I don't have and then I'm going to need to take that into account right so using that strategy uh, clearly you can see where we are need to have, start making some adjustments uh, this is how I plan myself when, when I'm going to deal with this question now I'm going to go through the differences 
and the differences will tell me who made the mistake so I know whether I must correct it in the, in the Curtis Ledger column or on the statement column. So this part here will tell me who made the mistake. Invoice 346 on the 5th of September was correct according to the statement. So 346 is correct according to the statement. So that one is correct. So mine would be incorrect. So this is the incorrect amount. I'm just going to, I'm not going to do the activity. I'm just going to put a line there because you know it's too much. This is 10,000, that's 11, it's too much. I need to subtract by the difference. I have to uh, find the difference and, and subtract. B, mall suppliers made an error in recording the returns. So they actually gave me a clue. They say mall traders have made a mistake. So remember what I said earlier, if it's on the wrong side, it has to be doubled up. They have to credit this account, okay? My, they have to minus 816 to correct the error, and then they must minus 816 again to take the returns into account. So that's an example of reposting to the wrong side. C, Marzi traders qualified for an early settlement discount with the payment on the 13th. Mall suppliers granted only 2532 as a discount. They promised to correct on the next statement. Okay, so let's read carefully here now. They are telling me, hold on, we were supposed to give you this discount. We must give you the discount. They did not take it into account, but they were only going to give me 2532 discount. So, on the statement side, I have to minus 2532. They did not minus it. That's the discount that they want to give me. So, I've got to subtract this, this amount. But when I look at the discount I took, I see I, I took 3532. 2532, So, I'm 1000 and too much. I, I, I was trying my luck there, trying my luck to see if they can give me an extra thousand rand. They said, no, no, no such luck. So I'm going to add back a thousand. So this is a case of making a correction in my books for a thousand and also making a correction in the statement for the 2,532. Can you see that one? That's a nice uh, one to remember. D, invoice 135 was incorrectly recorded in the creditors ledger of mall suppliers and right, like I just said earlier, it was incorrectly recorded in the creditors ledger. We did not buy these goods from these people. So the error is in the creditors ledger. We will have to subtract it from the account of mall suppliers. So that will be a subtraction. Maybe we just deduct 6929. A trade discount of 10% was deducted on invoice 396. Mall suppliers did not take this into account. So there was a trade discount. And this one here is wrong. They did not take it into account, which means our books are correct. Uh, we don't have to work out the 10%. We just simply need to take the difference. And, and then they need to subtract. There must be a subtraction of the difference. They, are, they have overstated the amount for invoice 396. At the last point, mall suppliers have correctly levied interest. So this interest they have correctly levied it. We, we are supposed to pay that interest. Maybe we decide we have not paid our account on time. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to add that to the creditors ledger section. And then hopefully after we've done that, we would see that the, the creditors ledger column is going to equal to the statement on the reconciliation column. Okay, so that concludes our discussion on